I know you started to touch on it on uh, Sunday, but after taking a look at the film, offense, defense of USC, what kind of sticks out on both sides of the ball? Uh, I mean, just their talent. They're obviously from a schematic standpoint, they're they're very well coached in in all three phases, and and uh, then just exceptionally talented. And so it's a it's a challenge uh, at every level, whether it's stopping the run, the play action element, uh, the quarterback run element that that he presents. I think is a little bit um, it's a little bit underrated. Uh, special teams, obviously, <laughs> Dory Jackson uh, getting him. Uh, out of the game is is a huge huge key to to success there um and then defensively they're very very good at kind of a base package in each each personnel group that they they present and then they always have a little a little package a little wrinkle for everybody each week and so it's a little bit difficult to to predict what that will be and i'm sure they'll have a little something for a new quarterback new offensive line all, the, all those kind of things Preston. Obviously, when Darnold took over, it looks like their season's kind of taken off four and one since he was the starter. Is it like that simple as the quarterback switched and they got a lot better? Or kind of what's changed since he's taken over and why why have they taken off a little bit? Why has their trajectory changed? Him. <laughs> yeah, him. He he's a he's a tremendous player. You know, we were involved in, in recruiting him for, for a little while. He committed fairly early. Um but he's just a, a really good football player and then surrounded by excellent talent and so uh veteran offensive you know all the all the things in in place and then a guy that that presents uh, uh you know a great passing threat and a great run threat really makes it go Thanks, SC's defense has been a lot better in October in terms of uh shutting down quarterbacks uh completion rates obviously ASU blitz a lot but what kind of challenge does this Trojan defense present for Justin Herbert um, they're different, obviously a lot different um, than than somebody than ASU, somebody like ASU of, of how they pressure. Um, it kind of comes from from different different areas in different ways. Uh, they disguise a lot more. Um, just they're you know just kind of schematically a lot different. And then the 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 the, the talent is is unique uh, in in what they have. Uh, the second level guys can all really run it's a really young you know secondary for the last two years that's that's grown up uh and then they're they've got a nose tackle two nose tackles that are really really stout and so it, it creates uh you know a, a gap for for their their linebackers who are very very fast to, to run through what do you do with that alabama game tape uh when bama played usc i mean obviously that was, that was one-way traffic in that game i mean uh do you do you even put much stock into that game at all, given that obviously now they have a new quarterback as well? From a from an offensive standpoint, you know, from our our offense, yes and no. That you know that they, they've they've evolved a little bit since game one. Uh, from our defensive perspective, yeah, it, it it is a lot different in terms of of what they do with Sam Darnold that they didn't do with Max Brown, um, and so that yeah, there's not there's not a lot of carry over there, uh, special teams wise. There, there, there's you know, quite a bit just in terms of of there, there were a lot of special teams plays and, and kind of unique things that happened in that game and so there's always something you can learn from from every game. This league always has good receivers on every team, but Juju Smith, what really stands out with him? And I was watching last week's game and the, the announcers called him maybe the most physical receiver in, in the Pac-12. Does that show up on film in your eyes? Definitely. I mean, he he's he is so big. I think he's listed at. You know, a little over six two, two twenty something, two twenty ish, and he looks every bit of that, if not more, when he's you know all padded up and uh, can really run. Takes a lot of pride in how he blocks. Uh, I think is one of the most Im- impressive things about that guy. And then uh, his ball skills are are crazy. Uh, and and you know all the other guys, Rogers and Mitchell, and and as soon as you forget one of them, <laughs> somebody else makes you pay. Mark, it seems like uh, Wogan's been one of the most consistent players on your team this year. Uh, how critical, not only Matt, but if you have to punt, just keeping it away from these guys? <laughs> it's huge. I mean, huge. We did some stuff live today that we don't do very often of of just reinforcing. We've got to get that guy on the ground. Part of that is how you kick it. You know how you kick it to him, and if and when, and where you kick it to him. Uh, but but uh, yeah, just and and 
you know, total awareness, total commitment to that. And then, you know, your first statement, yeah, Matt's been fantastic. I'm not sure exactly where he ranks now. I haven't looked at those stats from a, a touchback per, percentage standpoint, but he's been, he's been rock solid. It's just college football playoff rankings coming out tonight. Washington's expected to be ranked uh, in that top four, or by a lot of people anyway. Um, is is that are you is that good for the Pac-12 that uh, a team like Washington is ranked that high? And do you think having already played them, do they deserve to be ranked in that top four? I don't know. I'm not. We have to ask Rob Mullins. He's, he'll be, be the expert on that. And we're uh, you know we're going to pay the same amount of it attention to that as when we were in it as we will today and that's zero you know we just got to totally focus on our deal and and hopefully we're we're back in that conversation there was a story about the ncaa probably proposing some recruiting changes of a early signing period what what are your thoughts on that is that something that you're in favor of or what tweaks would you make to that proposal yeah i think i think the I think early signing in itself is is fine. I think the December the December signing date, the JC signing date, makes the most sense for everybody. Um, just in terms of you can you can still get guys in on official visits. Um, you don't have to change the recruiting calendar at all. I think if you move it back to, to June or you know what, whatever that date is in in the summer, I think that's very. Uh, uh, unfair to, to a team like us or teams where we're guy, we have to get guys here on official visits. It's a, you know, we're kind of a long way from, from everything and everybody and, and getting guys here on an official visit, allowing their parents to come out and see that on our dime is a, that's a huge deal. And to, to eliminate that possibility, I think is, I think that's just inequitable, uh, but we'll see how that, that shakes out. Basketball can bring guys in as juniors for official visits that be something that you would want for football? I would not. I think I think the best thing to do would be able to to bring bring guys in in you know in September uh and and just keep that that JC signing date have it have it be a an open signing date for for high school kids. I think going back that's when you're going, you know, it's just going speeding it up and pushing it up is is not good for anybody. Preston. I know we're not allowed inside of practice, but I did hear the USC fight song coming from uh, inside the duck store today. Uh, talking with Cam Hunt, who is from Southern California, he said he has like a hundred guys come, or a hundred family members coming to see him at the Coliseum. And with kind of that, that crazy atmosphere, what does playing in an atmosphere like the Coliseum, how does it affect a team like Oregon, just hostile environments in general? Yeah, we try to we try to create as many distractions as possible here, you know, and and throw them in the throw them in the flight simulator and throw everything at them and uh, try to you know try to have them see that we didn't bring in a horse today, but we might t- tomorrow, uh, and and create as much chaos as we can to to make them focus. And you know, regardless of where we play or you know, it's just like our defense in, at a home game; they have to be able to, to to communicate and never hear a word. And so that that's what we try to what we try to do inside. <laughs> 